Hello, Bo Auntie. Welcome again to Mbaban Islands Church Children's Ministry. We thank God for this beautiful Sunday morning that we are. We can come together and sit around to listen to His Word. Um, today we are going to have Auntie Meg speaking to us about cell phone control. It is the last of the Fruit of the Spirit series we've been doing for the past couple of weeks. And I hope, Auntie, that as we spoke about this, um, you have been reflecting and thinking about it and also asking God to change you so that you can exhibit the Fruit of the Spirit. Um, just before we join Auntie Meg, can we close our eyes and pray? Father God, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for giving us life. And we thank you that we can come together, Lord, even again, to listen to your word so that we can grow, my Father, and be more like you. And Lord, I pray that as we sit, my Father, speak to us, my God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, but Auntie, we will join worship and then we'll go to Auntie Max for our lesson today. I hope you have a beautiful Sunday. Bye. kept us till this far. I know that some of us are busy writing examinations, some of us are preparing to write our exams, some of us are actually preparing to write our final exams in primary school. Everything has happened because of the grace of God, Bo Auntie. And before we go any further this morning, I'd like us to close our eyes for a short word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you this morning for your loving peace and grace over our lives. We thank you, God, for your protection. We thank you, God, for your provision. 
We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you continue to think about us. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you continue to open doors for us. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that even this day you have blessed us with the wonderful gift of life. As we are about to hear your word, O oh Father God, help that our hearts listen and that we may hear the word that you have prepared for us this morning. We ask that, Father, you bless it and let it grow within us. And this we ask in the most powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, I hope that you have had a very good morning so far, Bo Auntie. And we are going to be talking about today or summing up or summarizing our fruits of the Spirit. I do hope, Bo Auntie, that we have been growing our tree of fruits as we have started discussing a few weeks ago. And I hope that we are beginning to exhibit these fruits consciously. I also hope, Bo Auntie, that we are asking for God's grace to help us to exhibit these fruits. Um, our base scripture today will be taken from John chapter 15. And I will just, it is a story that you do know, Bo Auntie, quite commonly. But I will just read the first few verses before we get into today's fruit of the Spirit. I am hoping that you've been keeping up so that you know today that our main uh, or our last fruit is the fruit of the spirit called self-control. That is our last fruit. Remember, I want you to keep in your mind that we said there isn't a fruit that is more important than another. Jesus doesn't ask us to bear a fruit. He asks us that these fruits will be shown in our lives and all of them, Bo Auntie. So we have spoken about. So before we get into our um, scripture for today, uh, I want us to look at or remind ourselves about Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. And the verse reads, we should possibly know it off by heart now, uh, is by the Holy Spirit, sorry, rather, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives remember but until we don't produce the fruit but it is the holy spirit in us that produces this kind of fruit so we should be showing as children of god love to one another we should exhibit joy even if things are not going the way that we would like we should exhibit um or show signs of being peacemakers Wherever we are, we are promoting peace. We should show um, patience, which we spoke about as long suffering, that sometimes things don't happen when I want them to happen, but I must, as a child of God, through the Holy Spirit, exhibit long suffering, that although I'm going through a difficult period, I can be able to wait and wait until my time comes. We also spoke about kindness, Bo Auntie, and remember that with kindness, it's got a ripple effect. You are not being kind to someone because they have been kind to you. You are, when you show kindness to somebody else, you are ultimately spreading kindness. Remember we spoke about also that these fruits, a fruit has got seeds, and so a, a single seed multiplies, Bo Ant. You don't just get one orange from a tree. You get from one seed many, 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 many oranges and people benefit from it. So if I, have, if I do one act of kindness, it changes somebody else's life and then they want to exhibit that fruit to somebody else. We also spoke about goodness. We spoke about faithfulness. And we spoke about gentleness and then today we want to focus on self-control. Okay, well, and these are all important all together. I also want to just remind you a little bit that when we discussed the fruits as well, we said each of these fruits have got different things that they bring into our lives. So whatever I get, for instance, from an apple, it's not what I'll get from a of a strawberry. What I get from a banana is not the benefit I'll get from grapes. I want you to always think about it that way. You are, you are almost more wholesome, more like God, when we exhibit this full basket of fruits all together. 
I can't say I'm a child of God because I just love. I can't say I'm a child of God because I've chosen one. The, the benefit is having all of these. We'll call them vitamins. We'll call them benefits of eating and putting everything into one basket and enjoying it. Okay, Bo Ant. So today we are going to talk about self-control as our fruit of the Spirit. I want to read for you... Um, John chapter 15, and I will just read from verse 1 to verse 6. I hope you've got your Bibles ready, and we will read together. It's John chapter 15, verse 1 to verse um, 8, actually. We'll read to verse 8. It reads thus, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that does not bear fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. If a, man, if a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I love that, Bo Ant. So this Bible uh, passage is, like I said, a passage we know, we've heard of before quite a lot. There are just two things I want us to um, focus on here. Number one, is the importance to God of, of us as children of God bearing fruit. The Bible says, this, this is such an important thing that God says, if you do not bear fruit, I will cut you off. I don't know if we remember the story of the fig tree in the Bible. It is when God is, has produced and we call ourselves children of God, the immediate thing he expects to see from us, Bo Auntie, is us having all of these, smelling like this. Look at my fruits, they are all colorful. It's gotta be something attractive. Because remember we spoke in the beginning about when we meet everybody, there must be a distinct difference between a child of God and somebody who is still looking to find Jesus. There must be something that draws people to you. And I'll tell you, if something is attractive and eye-catching, people look at it. They wonder, how does that person remain calm in a situation that would have either asked or required that person to behave in a different manner? How does someone respond to someone in kindness after the person has said something nasty to them? How is it that someone rushes over to even help your mom to carry the baskets up when they're coming out of the car because you are exhibiting these things as children of God. You are a person who loves to show love. You don't, it doesn't say anywhere that we expect it back because remember we said that fruits are to be enjoyed by somebody else. So when I bear the fruit, I'm spreading the love of Jesus. That person gets the benefit of the fruit. And then what happens next? They then, they then bear the fruit and then they pass it on to somebody else. So you are almost like a life giver when you are bearing the fruits of the Spirit. So that's the one thing. The Bible tells us that Jesus will cut us off if we do not bear fruit. The other thing he says here is that if you are to bear fruit, we've got to remain in him. So we've got to know that I can't sit on the table or sit in my room and cross my finger. I'm going to try hard to be kind. It doesn't work like that. It is the spirit of God. So it means I've got to spend a lot of time and, and, and every time it comes, which is where today's fruit comes in, self-control. These are the fruits all the time. I put this in a basket on purpose because I just wanted to look at self-control being the basket that carries all these fruits. 
And the reason I say that is because if you are wanting to show love, there's always an opportunity. If someone hasn't shown love to you, your immediate or your inner man wants to do the thing that does not come from God. Then self-control kicks in and tells you, no, because now I am a child of God, I must exhibit what my father is. It helps me to stop and think, or the spirit speaks to me in a silent voice and tells me that's not how I would behave. Someone has wronged you and I want to say something back or do something back. The spirit of God will tell you, be kind back. Maybe they are hurting from something and they have behaved like this towards you. So you will hear a little voice that will tell you, and that's self-control. It immediately comes back to remind you, don't fight evil with evil. And that is what self-control is, Mo'ant. So it is such an important fruit as well, because I feel like I will exhibit all of these things. Even when someone is not gentle to me, self-control will stop, and then it will, it will say, okay, I wanted to hit that person back. I will be able to what? Control myself before I respond with a bad word, before I respond with a fist, before I respond with a slap, or before I respond with this body action when my parents are asking me to do something. Okay, so the definition I found for anti for self-control, which stuck in my head, was... Self-control is the ability for you to choose the important thing over the urgent thing. If you have self-control, you have, you have the ability or you have mastered the technique of being able to choose the important thing over what you really, really, really wanted now or really, really, really want how you wanted to react in that moment. Let me give you an example. If you have, let's say you have got a very good friend and the friend of yours says something unkind or does something bad to you, you get upset. Self-control will kick in immediately and will make you choose the important thing, which is this relationship that you have with the friend over you reacting impulsively, reacting in anger and saying things to your friend that you can never take back, things that will be hurtful. Some of us will respond immediately with a what? With a fist. But self-control stops you immediately because you, it, it gives you, is it worth it to hit my friend? Or can I use kinder words to say, that has hurt my feelings and I don't like it. Or you can say, that was such an unkind thing to say or an unnecessary thing to say. It's like when you're in the house with your other siblings, what of these fruits are being tested in you or God is expecting them to grow in you and then an opportunity comes. For instance, your baby brother wants to borrow something and then you want to say, this is my thing. Self-control will kick in. And you will choose the important thing, which is, this is my baby brother. This relationship is what is more important to me than me hanging on to my things just to prove that I am the either older brother or younger brother. So that's what I'm saying is self-control is just being able to have a pause to think. The verse I chose for today to help us understand why this is such an important fruit of the spirit is found in Proverbs chapter 25, verse 28. Um, and this one reads as such. A man without self-control is like a city broken into and left without walls. So if you do not have self-control, you are like a city that has been broken into and you are left without walls. Wow. So this fruit of the spirit that is self-control is like a wall around us. 
I drew this picture and I was thinking to myself, this is you in the middle. This wall here is called self-control. If you have not, or if this wall of self-control has been broken, the Bible tells us that you are like somebody has broken into your house. Um, another version actually put it as a man without self-control is like a house without a door and a house without a uh, without windows. So you could be sitting inside the house, but you are exposed to things coming in and going out because you lack self-control. Now, God wants us to exhibit self-control. You know why? Because as we grow with our friends, they will bring us things we know are going to land us or get us into trouble. We might be at school, for instance, and your friend has not studied for the test. And they tell you, let's copy, my friend. Let's copy. And instead of you saying, no, I have not studied for the test. I'm not going to copy you, you don't have self-control to, to not do the right thing. It means that you have opened a gap here. And that has exposed you in the middle. It puts you into danger all the time. Because a wall protects. The job of a wall is to protect. The job of a door is to keep the things out that you don't want to keep out. Imagine yourself sitting in a house without doors. Imagine yourself sitting in a house without windows and you sit and you say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm safe in here. Anybody can walk in, anything can come into that house. You might hear unkind words and they could move back and forth, back and forth because you, you lack what? The wall around you. Self-control will carry in this basket all of these fruits arises where you could respond in kindness because you have covered yourself with this and, and you allow the spirit of God to build this fruit in you. You don't just in one day, well, auntie, drink a pill and become good. You don't just in one day. Every day presents itself with an opportunity. When I'm sitting and someone has fallen in front of me, I choose to show kindness or I choose to walk away. I choose, Bo aunt. when my mom asks me a question about whether I've used the money, whether I've stolen something, whether I've had something in the fridge that I was not supposed to eat, and you decide, you actually have a conversation in your head, do I tell her the truth and all of it or do I not? You choose this and that's what self-control does. It is that wall that protects you so that you, God does not cut you off. So that you do not get exposed to every other thing that is not good because in there are the fruits of the Spirit. In there are the things such as love, gentleness, faithfulness, kind. Because being faithful, Bo Auntie, is even in the smallest thing that you have been given. If mommy has said, go and sweep the room, you sweep it properly. She doesn't need to stand there in front of you. And actually the Bible tells us if you exhibit these fruits, God will prune it and then more fruit and then more fruit and then more fruit comes out of you. So self-controllable anti is also such an important fruit of the spirit. And we need to ask God and ask God that build this in me before I say something out of my mouth. How is it going to land on somebody else? Is it kind? Before I do something, I act unkindly. How is it going to... Self-control makes you stop before you, you act impulsively. It is the wall that protects you from making or make, make, taking a decision on something urgent and not something lasting and important like this. Because it is the choice between this is important and this is urgent. I want the money and I want it now. Which means I don't exhibit patience. 
I'm angry now, so I'm gonna upset the other person because I'm angry. There's no self-control. It is as if you have no walls and anything that is not pleasant is able to find you because you don't have self-control. It is when your friends tell us, let's go to a place and you just go without stopping to think, am I exposing myself? Am I breaking down the wall and exposing myself to dangers that wouldn't otherwise. So we need to, before we conclude, well, Auntie, look at, I'm gonna give you just four ways in which we can practice self-control or four ways in which we can be able to exhibit all of these fruits, but particularly self-control because we want to have a wall around ourselves. Number one, well, Auntie, it's to know the word of God. That means every day when you wake up, you take two or three minutes and you speak to God. Help me to make right decisions today and help me to be strong to stand for what I know is right. So know the word of God. Read it before you go to bed or in the morning before you go to school. And you know, remember we said prayer is not loud. You could be sitting in the car on the way to school and you could say a silent prayer to God and ask him to help you in the day. Spend time with God so he can yield these fruits in you. Number two, in order for us to have or bear these fruits, we've got to be aware of the things that can cause us to sin. Okay, be aware of the things. So if it's either the company that you keep, it's something you're watching on TV that you are not going to want to try, it's the conversations that you listen to, just be mindful of what you surround yourself with, okay? Because you're going to want to try that particular thing. So particularly with self-control, be aware of those things. When I am with this company, I normally do things I really don't like, or I normally come back feeling guilty for the conversations that so be aware of the things that will cause you to sin build a wall around you number three when you want to practice self-control or exhibit any of these fruits sometimes be prepared to suffer and the suffering means that you will be unpopular the suffering might mean that you will be the guy who's not as cool as everybody else in their eyes because you said, no, I don't want to partake in that. No, I'd like not to have that conversation. No, I want to show kindness. I'm not going to laugh at the guy on the floor. So the suffering there means you must just be prepared that when you make a stand to have self-control and not just follow without thinking, building a wall around yourself, you might suffer or become unpopular at times. But the benefits of that is that you will be preserved in the middle. Okay. And then the last one, Boanti, is follow good examples and pattern yourselves with success. You want to become a doctor? Look at people who've become doctors. Trace how they decided or made this choice to, they had to drop other things to focus on this thing. You want to be the next famous soccer player. How, what goes into you becoming the next famous soccer player? You want to own your own business. What goes into that? What are the disciplined things you need to put into place? Find yourself a good example to follow. Pattern yourselves against that or pattern yourselves with that. And then you'll have a good example in front of you. Use your parents as a bar. Look at your parents. This is what my mom has achieved. How is she living her life? How is dad living his life? So these are the things, well, auntie, the four things. Know the word of God. Be aware of the things that may cause you to sin and stay away from them. Be prepared to be unpopular sometimes for standing for what is right. And the last one, follow good examples. I think we all know what a good example looks like, Bo Auntie. So that is our um, word of God from today, Bo Auntie, is that it is important that we are always building a wall around ourselves 
in order for us to have these fruits to be exhibited in us. Okay. And last thing, it is the Spirit of God that helps us on a daily basis to be able to bear these fruits. Let's close our eyes, O oh Auntie, for a short word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you, my God, that you love us so much, that you care about us so much, O oh God, that you want us to bear fruit, Heavenly Father, and be successful in life. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you teach us, my God, to spend time with your word, O oh, Heavenly Father, so that we, my God, your Spirit can live through us on a daily basis. I pray for every single ear, my God, that has listened to your word over the, the course of this um, session, my Father, as we delved into the this, this, this fruits of the Spirit. I pray, Heavenly Father, that we begin to exhibit this as you are our father and we are your children. We pray for the courage, my God, that sometimes even if we'll be unpopular, you, oh God, are gonna help us, my father, to continue to show and share your love, continue to show and share your peace, continue, my God, to have self-control and make the right decisions, oh God, with our lives. We pray, Holy Spirit, that as your children, my God, are at home, some of them preparing for exams, Father, we speak your excellence upon them, my God. We pray for peace of mind as they study. We pray, my God, that you cause them to succeed. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will continue to shield them, shield their parents, my God, in the name of Jesus. We speak against anxiety, my God, as they go to sit for their examinations. And we are thanking you, Heavenly Father, in advance because you answer all our prayers. Continue to bless them, O oh God, through the course of this day and let this word grow in them, my Father, so that your glory is seen in the world through them. We ask of this, my God, because we trust in you and the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I pray, Bo Auntie, that you have a wonderful, wonderful day. And good luck to everybody who's writing exams. God is there. You do your best. And then God is certainly going to do the rest. Love you a lot, Bo Auntie. Keep well and keep safe and pray every day. Bye-bye. <laughs>
Suddenly brought to light when I met you.